Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Jimmy, how are you today? Good, good. Enjoying an afternoon down in uh, South. I'm enjoying an afternoon in South Bowen County. Okay. I like to hear it. Uh, well, Jimmy, I just came back. Uh, it is Saturday afternoon. I just came back from the Alabama-Arkansas game. Um, it was a lot closer than it probably should have been. Um, a fun game. I enjoyed it. Got a lot to say about it. Um, I'm going to start with with uh the the positive we can talk about the negative later i i really appreciated and loved jd davison's 70 run his individual 70 run uh towards the end of the second half i mean probably with about 10 minutes to go something like that 9 minutes to go um cuz he had not been playing super until that point and he made some really strong moves to the bucket um i i really appreciated that also Kudos to uh, Noah Gurley. Two big buckets late in the game. Uh, this is a guy that airballed a three on a wide open shot earlier in the contest. Um, he was not shooting particularly well. I think he hit a three early in the game, but um, I'm going to pull up the stats as you go on your rant here in a minute. But overall, look, there's probably some more to be negative about, but I'm going to say this, that uh, I- I'm I'm going to take this W and be done with it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you'd have just told me before the game that Alabama won the game and beat the hottest team in the country, definitely the hottest team in the SEC, probably the hottest team in the country, a nine-game win streak, including a win over number one. Uh, if, if you just told me before the game Alabama won, I wouldn't even think in the world that there was a single negative to be down about. And, and, and really, there's not. There's just things we must do better that there's not neg- we obviously need to cut down on turnovers but this team's needed to cut down on turnovers all season long that that's not new what was new was uh, i think that was a season high and, and the fact that you're still able to win the game despite a season high in turnovers that 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 shows that there really was a ton of effort out there and uh and holding Arkansas's a uh, good score to, 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 you know, an off game and overcoming foul issues. I don't think we were a big fan of officiating today. Uh, I don't think Arkansas was either, uh, you know, when both sides are bitching, I don't know if that means it's fair or not, but uh, you know, it's a huge win. Uh, Lenardi just came out as we tape this, uh, a new uh, bracket uh, or basically a new seating. And, and we remain a five, which is awesome. Uh, I, I mean, you know, if I'd have told you after we lost to Georgia or after we lost to Missouri, hey, we're going to be a five in the tournament. I mean, uh, th- that's just a great achievement. We have to remember, Luke, no matter what happens, uh, this will be the first time in 15 years we've made it to back-to-back NCAA tournaments. Yeah. So any bitching that's going on is just like, gosh, give it a break. We're just Let's just make the tournament in back-to-back years. No, I'm with you on that. Um, and just to illustrate the point a little further, I have pulled up the stats. We'll dive deeper into all of this. Uh, it wasn't a great game for Shackelford, uh, but going back to J.D. Davison for just a second, um, he had six turnovers that led the team. Uh, a couple of those turnovers were just, I mean, inexcusable. Bad. I mean, they really were. Uh, but Javon Quinterly, uh, our point guard, but I guess – Really, our two starting point guards combined for 11 turnovers. And then Shackelford, who can play the point on occasion, also had five. That's terrible. I mean, we really didn't play all too terribly well. I mean, we can brag on Gurley, and I think we should, for having the um, cojones to make the last couple of shots he made. I mean, they were uh, well-defended shots. He just made some really strong moves. Over their badass, over Over that 6'10 center. That guy's a hell of a player. Exactly. He, he looked really good. Um, and you're right about Note. He he got his second foul very early in the game, and then he didn't play for a long time. I want to, want to check his minutes uh, real quick on the box score. Uh, he only had 24 minutes. J.D. Note needs to play a lot more than that. Um, 
he is the leading scorer in, in the SEC. And I thought we had held him to less than this, but looking at the box score, he ended up with 12 points. I know he hit two big threes late. Uh, he also had a couple of foul uh, shots that, that helped boost that. But uh, talking about the officials, um, you know, I hate complaining about f- officials. And I'm, I just thought they did a pretty poor job. I thought that uh, one of the reviews at least should have gone to Arkansas late in the game. I thought that um, they called it very ticky tacky for stretches and then just let everything go for stretches. Um, and th- there was also, here's my other gripe about the officials. And I think this one's a very fair gripe. Why do they let uh, Eric Musselman on the court, like literally get to the paint under the basket to complain? Why They don't let anybody else do that. They don't let Bruce Pearl do that or uh, John Calipari do that, or, or certainly not Nate Oates. Why do they let Eric Musselman do it? He goes on the court as much as anybody. Um, and he needs to be teed up for it so he doesn't do it anymore. There, th- He kept testing the boundaries, and they never teed him up. Yeah, and, and what I don't like, and I know this is never going to happen, it's just he asked for a review of, of something that never, ever should have been reviewed that wasn't even close. It was the shot clock thing when they said uh, – Oh, that was stupid. Uh, he, was, he was complaining that the shot clock should have been reset when Alabama never possessed the ball and it wasn't even really close as to whether they did. You couldn't even watch a single second of it and go, hmm, maybe they're Alabama. No, Alabama didn't have the ball at any point, and he made them review it, and they reviewed it and, and very quickly and determined that uh, the, the, the call was correct. I, I think at that point you should have a rule that says, okay, Musselman, you're not allowed to complain about shit for like five minutes. you got to keep your mouth shut. For five what? minutes you can't say shit because you made us stop the game for no reason. And we did. I don't want to hear any complaining out of you for like five full minutes. And that should be the, that should be the rule. And, and going back to that, I'm going to continue this. Probably I'm going to, I'm going to sink into the ocean with my fist raised on, on this topic. I'm tired of reviews, Jimmy. I'm tired of reviews. It destroyed the flow of the game on multiple occasions. And you know what? They They don't get it right. We just talked about that they missed some foul calls, and and on both ways, I'm not com- I'm not complaining about the officials like they helped Arkansas. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying they miss calls. Let them miss other calls. Let them miss something. It's fine. <laughs> but the, the whole idea that everybody's getting these extra timeouts is stupid. And I'll tell you yep. something else that makes me mad. I went with a buddy of mine, and um, after the first half, I was like, "That's perfect." The first half took about an hour. It, it didn't, you know, the first half ended yeah. at like eleven fifty-eight, and the second half took forever. And I mm-hmm. recorded two and a half, two and fifteen, two hours and fifteen minutes of this on my DVR because for the basketball game, it's usually pretty structured unless it goes into triple overtime, right? And Probably it didn't record enough. That's you know why? Because of all these damn reviews. That's reviews. What, that's what it was. And that reviews fine. that they got wrong. Reviews that they even got wrong. Exactly. They got they got the reviews wrong, and, and I mean. You know, the Rojas thing, that that never, ever, ever, ever should have been a flagrant. Never, never. I mean, I, I just, that's just, and, and the, the announcers, by the way, agreed. I mean, when, when the announcers watch the replay, they're like, both of them, they're like, that's not a flagrant. And then the, and, and I'm watching go, that's not a flagrant. And the official goes, eh, it's a flagrant. You know, flagrant, the very word means it was bad. It wasn't bad. Rojas wasn't, when the guy walked into Rojas's hand, he wasn't – Rojas wasn't even looking at the guy. He wasn't even yeah. looking at him. He, you you essentially penalized Rojas very badly for being kind of clumsy. And you know what flagrants are now? They're the new targeting. We, it's very nebulous. It's, yeah, I mean, if you if you stop it just the right to frame, you can say it's aggressive and it's, and it's just dastardly. By the way, we've never used the word dastardly on this podcast until just right now. Uh, word of the day. So, um, anyway, I mean, it's Jimmy- a foul. He hit him in the face. You can't hit people in the face. That's a foul. But flagrant to me requires excessive. I agreed. You know, excessive or intentional. Like you intentionally hit him in the face. Well, if he was intentionally hitting him in the face, I think he'd be looking at his face when he when he did it. I mean, yeah. it was dumb. It was a foul. Fine, put him on the free throw line, but. A flagrant for that, and and then I noticed Alabama got mad. Alabama actually played more physical after that call because I think they were yeah. mad. But 
Jimmy, let me tell everybody about Bet Online. Football might be over for this season, but basketball, just like it was today, is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball, y'all. BetOnline.net is the source for hockey, boxing, UFC, whatever, Olympic coverage, all that stuff. They got it, betonline.net. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline is where the game starts. Also want to tell you about Built Bar. These things are awesome. You know you know they're awesome. I've told you about them a gazillion times. This is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions. I know you probably have too. <laughs> but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution. I'm going to eat right thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really even a resolution because I'm actually enjoying eating them. Have you tried the puffs? I have. If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors like yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, and banana cream pie. They're all so good. These are going to be your new favorite. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, Real chocolate, yes, puffs included, 100% real chocolate. Low-calorie, high-protein, replace your candy bars with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories, and that's the small ones. Most Built Bars contain about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which is usually around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Go to built.com, B U I L T.com. Check out Built Bar today. You're going to love them because I love them, and you're going to love what I love. Jimmy, um, I'm about, uh, seriously, and as soon as we're done with this pod, I'm headed to go get my hair cut. So I know some people are like, <laughs> what is up with dude's hair? I need a haircut badly. It gets very strawy. I keep screwing with it um, while we're on air, and it messes things up. Uh, but I need to stay on topic. I'm going to talk about basketball for just another minute here. Um, and let me say this. You want to talk about negatives? Jimmy and and all Alabama basketball fans, well, what are y'all doing? They, the crowd was terrible today. Terrible. Really? Terrible. Do you mean people? quiet or not enough people? Both. Both. I was okay. shocked too because we stopped at that Chick fil A um, on 459. Shout out to Chick fil A 459 on the way down yeah. uh, when that Target and Public Shopping Center. And I right. saw a lot of Alabama people in there. And I was like, man, this is cool. This is going to be a good crowd. I'm, I'm digging this. And we get there and I had, I could have sat just about anywhere, Jimmy. Now, maybe there were eight, that, I, I don't know what the announced crowd is going to be. I'm going to say eight, 8,500 people. I mean, I might be all five plus or plus or minus five hundred. Lots of empty seats. Very disturbing wow. to me. And we can say, okay, eleven o'clock tip. Eleven a.m. Okay, five. eleven a.m. I mean, that's the that's the explanation is the eleven a.m. tip. Five. Okay, that doesn't explain uh, seven thousand empty seats, six thousand empty seats to me. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great. T- Frankly, Jimmy, uh, eleven o'clock is cool with me. Now I'm a almost fifty year old man. With a lot of children, I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, even on Saturdays, and I go to bed at 7.30, even on the weekends. So I'm fine with 11 o'clock tips. I understand uh, that students aren't. And I'll say this. I love the student section. I love what they've done all year. Crimson Chaos has been awesome all year long. They weren't so awesome today. I I was uninspired. Um, They're probably still just getting in from last night. Those uh, college kids, they they go go out at like 11. Okay. And I hear you. Okay. But, and I know those, I'm not saying Crimson Chaos kids don't party, but the Crimson Chaos clan, I shouldn't call them that, um, Crimson Chaos group, (laughs) (laughs) Crimson Chaos group, um, they're not the frat daddies and they're not the, you know, sorority sisters. So I don't see them as having like the, the, that kind of super duper party life. They can still party. I'm sure they party. I'm just saying that I feel like they if you're in Crimson Chaos, you're a little more dedicated to basketball. You have like, you, like you know you do have a duty. You have a duty. Yeah, you, you have, have a duty. duty. So and and when the lights went out to introduce the Bama players, um, a lot of the Crimson Chaos apparently they put their lights on their phones. I'm gonna say 20 of them did it. It, it was and it looked sad. Um 
Are you telling me that when they when they would say like, and from uh, Eustis, Florida, Keon Ellis, and they were like, who's that? <laughs> like it's when did you two come out? Um, <laughs> but no, I, I was just disappointed in the crowd altogether. Um, I don't want to be a hypocrite. This is only my second basketball game of the year, so I mean, I've, I've certainly contributed to some to some lack of attendance, but. Man, I'm, I'm I was really disappointed in in the crowd today, and um, I think our team deserves better. And I really hope the the crowd is better for Mississippi State on Wednesday night, um, because I, Jimmy, as you know, I predicted we win these next three games uh, when you I did. said it was Tuesday. You we did two of them. We got to beat Mississippi State. Got to. So, you did. I, I predicted we'd split. Now I feel terrible that I did because that means losing to Mississippi State. And I think as the game gets closer, I'm I'm got, I'm, I'm, I'm I guess you'd say I'm backtracking, but. Really, what I normally do when I predict games is I, I I pick the team that's the best, you know, whoever's best, the best team's going to win the game. But uh, I did predict a split before Arkansas and Mississippi State because I worry that we haven't turned the corner, that we're still two steps forward, one step back. But today may have sufficed for that explanation. It, it, we didn't turn the corner at Oxford. We're still a, a, a team that's under construction. We're still a team that's trying to overcome some inherent flaws. And that was apparent today. We don't need to lose to Mississippi State to make that point. We, we are still a flawed basketball team, and it, 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 but we still have time to figure it out too. Uh, I'm still very optimistic about what this team might be able to do in March. My concern is we're gonna do something awesome compared to the history of our program, like make it to the Sweet 16 and lose, and, and, and more than half our fans will think that this whole season was a cruddy disappointment, when in fact getting to the Sweet 16 makes it, like, by definition, one of the 10 or 11 best seasons in the history of our program. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on, on all of that, and I think that um, we need, again, just keep the big picture in mind. I mean, I, I was a victim of this, too, earlier in the game when Alabama was up you know, 13 or 14, whatever it was. And I was thinking, man, if we could have just beaten Davidson, man, if we could have just beaten Iowa man, or Missouri or Georgia, by the way, we're still Georgia's only win in the SEC. They lost again today. So that's very disturbing. This team is still very flawed. And I think we saw a lot of that today. I want to talk about it some more and some more stats when we come back from this break. And if you're watching on YouTube, it was a very short break. If you're listening on the podcast, welcome back. Um, <laughs> uh, so, Jimmy, here's an, uh, let me talk about another negative here for a second. Um, mm -hmm. I had really hoped Javon Quinley had turned the corner um, against Ole Miss. I thought he had a good game. Uh, but let me, let me just read these stats. And, you know, he didn't start again today. Um, and I had been begging for that, you know, hoping that things would change. He had uh, 28 minutes. He was 0 of 3 from beyond the arc. He had four assists, but five turnovers, six points. And here's the kicker to me, Jimmy. Yet again, late in the game, he's at the free throw stripe to make things, um, if not solidified. I mean, he would have only made it a three-point game, but he certainly would have made everybody feel a little more comfortable. Instead, he shorts it on the first one. I mean, it's just – it's not even close. And we saw this against Davidson, and I'm trying to think the other game – uh, where he did this. Was it LSU that he had a chance to really ice things? I, I can't remember which game it was. Um, but, look, it is so hard to criticize because, I mean, if you've ever played a sport, you've been there where the spotlight's on you and you've got to make the free throw or you've got to make the kick or whatever it is. But JQ is, is an older dude. He's he's a senior. He's got to be our leader. And you got we got to count on him to make that shot because here's the other thing. We're not a great ball handling team. He's probably our best ball handler. And so he's going to have the ball late in games. We got He's got to be able to make that. And I, I don't know what to do about it. Um, it's not like you can just get in the gym. Everybody loves to say, get in the gym, practice free throws. I think with him, it's more about dealing with the pressure late in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if he's just got an issue with that altogether. You know, I went and looked because obviously, you know, he shot almost 50% three-point shooting a year ago. Unbelievable. This year is at 24%. And you're like, so one thing I looked at also was, well, is shooting just across the board bad for him uh, because he's only making 70% free throws? He only made 70% last year. So that's just what he is. He's a 70% free throw shooter. And that number seems to go down a little bit when when the weight of the world's on him. So 
Yeah, it, it's it's very frustrating. I think in so many ways he's the poster child for this basketball team. Nate said in his postgame comments that when JQ is on, when he's focused and playing great, he may be the best point guard in all of college basketball. That was Nate Oates' words. He said, but he's not always – at his best, which was a bit of an understatement. Yeah. And, and it so much explains this team. It's like, man, when when we play well, we're really good. But we don't play well all of the time. Even inside games that we play well, we don't play well all the time. And, you know, some of that is on Nate. Uh, it doesn't mean, again, I hope people learn that they can be critical of the coach or question the coach while at the same time, wanting to sign the coach to a 15-year deal. I, I don't want Nate to go anywhere. I think he's great. I think he might prove to be one of the great coaches in Alabama basketball history. I don't want him to go anywhere. I also don't think he's done his best coaching job with this team. And while he's not going to say that until this season is over, I bet he admits it when the season's over, that he's just had a difficult time getting these guys to play to their 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 potential. And that doesn't mean he's not a great coach. It just means that – uh. Hey, you know, he's new with this, too, and and, and I'm, I'm sure in some ways he feels like he's running out of ideas. I would also say, Nate, don't worry. You, you watch what this schedule is, is going to create for this team in March. In March, when the real pressure gets here, a lot of other teams are going to fold, and Alabama's going to be like, hey, this feels like December, January, and February to us. I don't know where y'all been. Game's been like this way for us since we since we started in November. I I really believe this schedule is forging this team into something special in March. I'm not predicting a Final Four run or a national championship. I'm just saying we're going to win a couple of games in March that are going to make this season very special. I, I think the schedule is going to help. At least I believe it should. Um, here, <laughs> you know, a lot of times I would say, okay, even if it didn't help this year, it'll help for next year. But we don't have so much roster turnover every single year now, and that goes for everybody right. in college basketball, that usually you won't have a carryover like that. A um, couple other quick stats from the game, Jimmy. By the way, I think it's a great point about Nate Oates not having his best year. Look, and it doesn't mean we don't love Nate Oates. I won't late Nate Oates here at Alabama for a long time. I'm in love with Nate Oates. I think he's wonderful. but I think you're right, and and uh, that it, this has not been his best year. Whereas last year he was phenomenal. He, it seemed like everything he did turned to gold. Um, this year, he's he is just like the team. He's having a hard time getting in sync with what's working and what's not. Um, but let's finish up. Let's wrap this up with some positives again. Juwan Gary only played six minutes, and we won. Um, Javon Quinterly plus Shackelford, plus Davidson, 27 total points. Or excuse me, let me take off Davidson. How about Shackelford, Quinterly, and Ellis? 23 points and a combined, uh, how many turnovers? Uh, well, a combined 11 turnovers, but only Shaq and, and uh, Quinterly had them. And we still won the game. We're not going to win. Frankly, if you had told me Ellis, Shaq, and Quinterly – have 23 total points and 11 turnovers, I would have said we got beat by 20. I mean, yeah. that's what makes sense. Um, let me give you one more positive, too. And I, I cannot uh, go without saying this. Man, Jason Holt, dude, we appreciate you. Don't transfer. You go the Mac Jones route. You're, you're not big enough to, to play a lot of minutes just yet. I mean, you played a lot against Ole Miss. I understand it. But you, you've got some growing up to do. There's no doubt about it. Dude, you came in there and worked your butt off, and I think that's much appreciated. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and uh, he's 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 earning a role on the team, uh, and, and and he's going to play crucial minutes in big games. Also, shout out to you today, by the way, Luke, because you said a strange thing on the last show that I think proved one hundred percent true. You said we're catching Arkansas at a good time, and that's a really strange thing to say about a team that's in a nine-game win streak that just beat the number one team in the country. But you were exactly right. Arkansas was not ready to play well today. And, and, and I'm not credit to Alabama. Credit to Alabama, of course. But I think Arkansas would tell you, well, over the last 10 games, that was that was the one that we want to flush. They, they didn't play great. Uh, I don't think they played necessarily 110% uh, effort either. 
And I think it, it's exactly what you said. It, it, today was a letdown performance by Arkansas, and that's how we could turn the ball over as many times as we did and still win the game uh, for that very reason. Uh, you were right. It was a good time to play them. Well, I appreciate the accolades, bro. I don't get very many of them. I'm, I'm married. <laughs> well earned. <laughs> um, all right, buddy. That's going to do it for this. I know you got to go get shopping. I got to go get my haircut. So, uh, yeah, this looks awful. But uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We appreciate y'all. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. subscribe. We need more subscribers. <laughs> it only takes a second. It only takes one second of your time. Please do that. If you're watching, do subscribe. Just a few seconds helps us out a lot. We will give you a shout out on the show if we know who you are that subscribed. How about that? We get in trouble for cursing all the time, and this will help oh, yeah. us. This is, I'm not kidding. I, I, had a, I won't even say who, I'm, who, I'm, who I had a meeting with, but um, <laughs> somebody in our system, and they were like, yeah, sometimes the powers that be not exactly sure what to do with you and the Georgia guys, because y'all, sometimes y'all say some things. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they love the show but sometimes y'all say some things and and i'm like okay i know it's really hard for us to break this habit this is what we've always done this is how we talk this is not <laughs> an act this is what we do so um so uh, subscribe that'll help us that will if you want us to get if you want us to quit cussing subscribe <laughs> wait a minute i don't even know if i should say that because the people that it's the other way around like our cussing. <laughs> All right. it's the other way around i think True. We'll cuss more. All right. Roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.